Good evening, and welcome to the 605 hour. <laughs> when uh, Miss Sonia told me it started at 605, I thought, isn't that an amazing time? Because I thought, in the past, someone must have been very clever, and we're going to do worship at 605 to remind to pray for our 605 area code. <laughs> right? And she told me that wasn't really the case, but I'm going to adopt it, and that's our new story. We start at 605 to remember to pray for our 605 area code, for our community and our people. And we come here to this place at 605 to remember that very thing, to remember our humanness inside of that space and how God walks with us inside of that space and how God brings us to reconciliation when we mess that space up. Right? Because we do. Um, before we begin, there's a housekeeping announcement and then a faith formation announcement. Um, inside of your little bulletin here, if you open it up, when you travel down to the bottom of this page and it says confession and the petition response of the community is have mercy on us, God, um, that is actually going to be sung. You have the beautiful gift tonight of Miss Sonia's thoughtful, talented intellect and creativity. Most of this worship will be accompanied by music. So even the readings are going to have this extra layer behind it tonight. And the confessions will have that. So when you get to the confessional space and we are prompted to say, have mercy on us, O God, remember it will actually sound a little bit more like this. Have mercy on us, God. Right, Tanya? Want to play it? Okay, we're going to try that. Have mercy on us, God. Have mercy on us, God. It will show you how long I've been out of the classroom. I'm going to be Pete, and you're going to be repeat. Have mercy on us, God. Have mercy on us, God. And that will be how we respond and petition to the confessions. All right? The next uh, note is about faith formation. Um, Miss Sandra and I, all these S's, Miss Sandra and I have been diligently pondering faith formation questions and the time of Lent and what that means together. And we have put together a devotion for you for the whole season. There is one that reflects Sundays and there is one that reflects Wednesdays. And it's wrapped around this idea of fasting and prayer and almsgiving. If you didn't know, the idea of fasting, prayer, and almsgiving in the Holy Catholic, i.e. Universal Church, actually hit the ground in 325 A.D. at a group when the bishops got together called the Council of Nicaea. It was introduced, and it's kind of taken flight from there. And every Lent, then you enter this space, and it's a very ancient historical practice. So for this Lent, we were thinking about the idea of generosity and what does that mean? And we were pondering this idea, which we share with you and ask you to ponder during Lent. Generosity as a spiritual movement through prayer, fasting, and into a life of almsgiving as displayed in our language and actions toward our neighbors, known and unknown. Generosity as a spiritual movement. God working through us, being generous to us through the actions of Christ and the Holy Spirit to serve our neighbor. That's our thought for Lent. And you will see each week a reflection, a prayer, and then the opportunity for almsgiving. What does that mean? And Mission and Outreach is going to get together boxes. So if you choose to donate one of the objects, you can put them in the box for that organization. All right? So that is our faith formation section for Lent. Uh, with that then, I will ask us to stand as we are able. I think, am I standing or am I just used to Sunday mornings? 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. The Holy Spirit calls us to turn toward God and one another. When we turn, we see God with new eyes for living. When we turn toward God, we see our neighbors with new eyes for loving. A reading of Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. And if you need to sit, please sit. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundance, merciful mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in my inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean, Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem then you will delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered at your altar. Let us pray. Together of God's mercy, almighty and ever-living God, out of your love and mercy, you breathe into dust the breath of life, creating us to serve you and our neighbors. Call forth our prayers and acts of kindness and strengthen us to face our mortality with confidence in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives... Please be seated. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. 
So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who sees you in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where, mouth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consume and where thieves do not break in and steal. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the end of our lesson. On my way to church on Monday, my phone chimed indicating a text message. The technology on my truck displayed, text message received. I was driving, and to be safe, I tapped the please listen button so that I could hear the message rather than cause a car accident. The message spoke. Hello, is the cake I ordered ready? If you could please have it delivered by 5 p.m., that would be perfect. The party starts at 6. My reaction was empathy with the sender. They're not going to get their cake on time. They texted the wrong person. I am not a cake baker. I felt this need to respond right away so their party would be wonderful. I was imagining all the calamity that would happen if they didn't get the message, the cake baker. Poor little Johnny wasn't going to be happy to have candles blow out. Or Grandpa wasn't going to get his retirement cake because the message went the wrong way. As soon as my truck stopped in the church parking lot, I got on my phone and was ready to respond. But then I saw wiped down looking for the text message where this plea for this delivery had happened, but instead there was a notice. The text message was gone, and my phone alerted me. We have detected incoming spam and moved to the message to the spam folder. And I thought, oh, to myself, this changes things just a bit. You see, there's a filter on my phone that will weed out text messages that are spam and or probably not good for me to respond to. And we live in that kind of technological age. And now my whole thought process was different. This is no longer a text message I would be reacting to. The truth is, in hindsight, I didn't know anything about the sender that area code, where the message came from. There was no name. It was just, thank you, get it to my house, bye. I did a little Google research, and the area code came from Anaheim, California. What's that mean to me? I don't know. I've never lived there. So I actually don't know who sent it. I don't even know if it was safe to open, or my phone wouldn't have blocked it. I share this story to highlight the very real process each of us go through when making decisions. 
and our need to have a thoughtful way to filter information to make better decisions. All of us, on one hand, have this emotional reaction. Feelings welling up, and we're off and running like we're in the Olympics, and that big pile of sand is down there, and we're just going to get going full sprint to do that leap two feet forward to see how far we can go. On the other side, it's the thoughtful pause and response, our ability to process and collect ourselves to even decide if running that fast and jumping that far is going to be good for us. Maybe we'll tweak our knee on the landing. Or maybe I might have a heart attack as I get running that fast, right? We get to stop and gather information and consider the outcome and the benefit of what we're getting ready to do. Reaction, response. And between them, this filter is helping us move from one place to the other. And I consider with you here today, the words we hear from Jesus are this filter that we actually need to help us move from emotional reaction to thoughtful response. Emotional reactions are often knee-jerk. And maybe it's just me, but I've discovered that reacting to a situation actually harms relationships and doesn't help. Even when I believe I'm doing it because I just want to be helpful or because I want to be good or because I think it's what God wants, it actually has a different slant when we react out of emotions. Because reaction is often about the self and not the other. And if I look hard at Jesus' words today, I think one way we can engage them is as this guide concerning our emotional reactions to people and situations. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. In other words, Stop and think about how you treat people, especially in the name of God. When you give alms, if you brag about your service to others, you might actually be doing harm to those you've committed to help. So be wise with how you speak. When you pray, it isn't about self-glorification. It's about building relationships. Prayer isn't a weapon to control. It is a form of sacred conversation with God and others. And fasting is about trusting God to work through you in an intentional reflection of what happens when you turn to God to supply your need rather than rely on self or other items. I mean, to walk around with a sullen face to honor God if I had a grumpy face for God, who would want to know the God that I love? Would you? Hello, would you? All the time. Who would want to talk to me about God? No one. And lastly, don't be dependent upon emotional attachments we have here on earth but use your energy to focus on the one thing that lasts forever, relationship with God, this place we call heaven. You see, Jesus was very, very wise. I mean, he was a son of God. He is wisdom, like he's all of these things, right? And he knows that in our flesh, we struggle with emotional, emotional reactions to stuff and things and events. I mean, when Adam and Eve ate the fruit in the garden, they proved right away we had a problem. These humans needed guidance to make better decisions. Look at that fruit. It's good to eat and a delight to the eyes, and it would make me wise if I just bite that thing. What an emotional reaction to the serpent's conniving. 
And we have been emotionally reacting ever since. As the leading scholar on social work and human, act human interactions, Brene Brown says, we are emotional people who happen to sometimes think. Or as St. Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 7, I am of the flesh, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. This internal piece of us that causes us to react emotionally is so embedded, and it is a good portion of why there's so much brokenness or sin in the world, because we actually cause it. And on this Ash Wednesday, during this season of Lent, then, we are invited to take a long, hard look at that. Investigating the things we do that keep our relationship with others and God at arm's length. And then we are invited to look through Jesus' life, to look through the cross as better ways to respond to the world developing relationships for good. We come here to remember our flesh is actually very weak and that we are but mere mortals. But we also come knowing that in Christ we are made strong to respond and love not just him, but others because of God's love for God's creation which includes us. God's love is this thing empowering us and emboldening us. That love which is made manifest in Christ even for our flesh. And this, my friends, is by far the very best Valentine's present any of us could get today. So come and know that in this, you were made alive in Christ. Amen.
friends in Christ, today with the whole church, we enter the time of remembering Jesus' Passover from death to life and our life in Christ renewed. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for God's mercy. We are created to experience joy and communion with God, to love one another, and to live in harmony with creation. But our sinful rebellion separates us from God, our neighbors, and creation, so that we do not enjoy the life our Creator intended. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to a discipline that invites us to turn toward restoration and reconciliation and away from objects and actions that break the bonds of relationships with God and neighbor. This invitation creates a pathway of discipleship, the path of discipline we call Lent. Together we will step into the ritual of self-examination repenting all of the ways that keep us from relationship with God and others, while turning toward the generosity of love, mercy, and forgiveness of God. Strengthened by the gifts of word and sacrament, let us continue our journey through these 40 days, preparing our hearts as the generosity unfolds on the great three days that are coming of Jesus' death and resurrection. I ask you to stand as you are able. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most holy and merciful God, we confess that that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength, We have not loved our neighbors as ourself. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. We have shut our ears to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Our past unfaithfulness, pride, envy, hypocrisy, and apathy that have infected our lives, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to share the faith that is in us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our neglect of human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our false judgments, our uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors and our prejudice and contempt towards those who defer from us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, we confess to you. Have mercy on us, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God for your mercy is great. I invite you to be seated. Almighty God, you have created us out of dust of earth. May these ashes be a sign of our mortality and penance, reminding us that only by the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ are we given eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, you're invited to come forward and be marked with the sign of cross. These ashes last year were a sign of life.
They were the procession of palms. And this year, they remind us that God works inside of our very brokenness to produce life. The ushers will instruct you forward. United in one body as a people, accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Trusting in the promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. You call us to return to you, steadfast God. Renew a right spirit within the church and cleanse the hearts of your people. Strengthen those who proclaim your gospel in word and deed. Hear us, O God. You sustain your creation, generous God. Supply all that is needful for the life to flourish. Protect endangered species and fragile habitats. Teach us to live lightly upon the earth and to honor it as our home. Hear us, O God. You seek justice and peace, righteous God. Rebuild cities and homelands devastated by war. Provide welcome, help, and safety to refugees. 
prosper negotiations that lead to lasting peace among the nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You care for all people, loving God. Heal any who are scarred by violence, addiction, or trauma or any of any kind. Comfort those who grieve and bring relief to any in pain. Hear us, O God. You gather this assembly, abiding God. Unite us in serving our neighbors and working for justice. We pray for caregivers and people who are hospitalized, in treatment or recovering from illness, especially Leonard and Keith, Lorraine, Norma, Lyle, Bob, Lois, Joyce, Esther, Greg, Kathy, Barb, Ken, and Jerry. Hear us, O God. You redeem us from death, faithful God. We give thanks for those who serve you in the church. Bring us with all the saints into everlasting joy. Hear us, O God. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, he took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, in the same way, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Gathered together by the work of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Come and receive Jesus, our strength and comfort in the wilderness. I invite you to be seated.
I ask you to stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, accompany our journey through these 40 days. Renew us in the gift of baptism that we may provide for those who are poor, pray for those in need, fast from self-indulgence, and above all, that we may find our treasure in the life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God, who has called us forth from the dust of the earth and claimed us as children of light, strengthen you on your journey into life renewed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, standing in the generosity of God, to be the image of God's generosity of this, in this world. Thanks be to God. <laughs>